Everybody wants to blame the Fed for the market's meltdown over the last couple of months. And, and there's some truth to that. But at the end of the day, the Fed's only lit the match. The spark that led to a conflagration of selling, not just because Jay Powell wants to hit the brakes in the economy, but also because the stock market already had tons of dry kindling that was more than ready to burn. I'm talking about the mountain of recent IPOs and SPAC stocks with next to nothing propping them up. I always like to say that all markets are controlled by supply and demand, including the stock market. When you get a record number of IPOs like we did last year, roughly 440 of them, and a record number of awful SPAC mergers that are like faux IPOs, about 200, that creates a stock club. We could handle this new supply just fine when the Fed was still our friend. But once Jay Powell started talking about imminent rate hikes, the stock market collapsed under the weight of all this new paper. Like I pointed out last night, there are vast swaths of the market where stocks have been cut in half. And many of these names are either SPAC plays or recent IPOs because investors want out. And who can blame them? A lot of this is just garbage. Honestly, the present moment feels a lot like the year 2000, when the 300 companies that came public during the dot-com period suddenly went out of style and then disappeared. And we have no idea when this kind of pain is going to end. But if the dot-com bomb is any guide, there are two things you need to keep in mind. One, most of the new issues will never fully recover. Two, a select few of them will be able to pull through and eventually surge to new highs. <laughs> Call them the Amazons. They're down there. Those are the ones we need to try to find. Buy on weakness. You just need to know how to identify the beaten down potential winners from all those losers. Fortunately, there's absolutely no hurry. The recent IPO and SPAC stocks are still in the doghouse. I don't see that changing anytime soon. But it's never too early to start keeping a lookout for the ones that might make sense as long-term investments. Because I'm a big believer in rigor, I want to take a systematic approach to filtering out the wheat from the oceans of chaff. And right now, the best filter is profitability. Because when the Fed is tightening, Wall Street loves earnings and disdains everything else that's conceptual. So how many of these newly public companies are making money? I mean, actually, not bookings, not revenue, but real earnings. I think the profitable ones will be the first to bottom whenever the carnage comes to an end, although that could take a while. And, of course, it turns out there aren't very many profitable ones to begin with. When you filter out all the SPACs and all the quirky instruments we had with 440 traditional IPOs last year, although two of those have already been acquired, so now it's 438. On top of that, we had six direct listings, so back up to 444. Then you've got to add the SPAC mergers, the companies that came public by merging with a special purpose acquisition vehicle. If a SPAC is a blank check company, then these post spac names are what happens when the blank check gets spent. Looking at the deals that have closed, It gives us another 205 stocks. Now we have a total of 649 new listings. No wonder we have a stock clut. That's a horrendous amount of unseasoned supply, like a fire hose going off in your sink when you're brushing your teeth. Needless to say, most of these stocks have performed horribly. So now let's talk profitability. How many of these beaten down stocks are expected to make money this year? That's a tricky question. For the purposes of our analysis, we're going to assume that any new listing with no analyst coverage has basically been set up to fail. Well, the 649 new issues, 559 of them have earnings estimates, which equates to institutional sponsorship. And among those, 204 actually have positive earnings estimates for 2022. That's a lot more than I expected. However, many of these earnings uh, per share forecasts are barely positive. That's why I want to throw in another screen valuation. Of the 204 ostensibly profitable new issues, 129 of them have priced earnings multiples below 30. 92 of them sell for less than 20 times earnings, and 35 actually sell for less than 10 times earnings. Hey, that's cheap. So cheap that I start to worry that something's real wrong. So let's stick to the 129 that are selling for 30 times earnings or less. Of these, 31 are too small to talk about on television. We also eliminated two Chinese IPOs because historically they're terrible. Next, we looked at the earnings estimates for 2023 and removed any companies expected to have a down year because those are potential value traps. Then we screened for bad balance sheets. In the end, we were left with the listing 61 companies, okay? 61 new listings with actual earnings, reasonable valuations, and non-horrible balance sheets. That's right. One-tenth of what we started with may actually be any good. One-tenth. So let me highlight the ones that I think are, are, let's say, notable. First is Perella Weinberg Partners, which is a boutique investment bank that now trades at eight times this year's earnings estimates. This is a rare SPAC stock that pays a dividend, supports a 2.9% yield. Second, Dole, the fruit and vegetable company. Uh, Now, their most recent quarter was not so hot, but a packaged food play feels like a kind of fit in the current environment, especially when Dole sells for eight times earnings with a 2.5% yield, although I've never liked it historically. 
in all its different forms. Third, Playtica and Nexters are both mobile game developers. We mentioned the former last night, and with Take-Two paying up to Empire Zynga, I'm feeling confident about this subgroup. Those seems interesting to me. Fourth is Traeger. Now, I've been dead wrong. Dead wrong on these grill stocks. And these guys have some supply chain issues. But with the stock in the single digits trading at 17 times earnings, it could be a keeper. I'm more sanguine about number five, though, Solo Brands, the outdoor products company with a stock that sells at 10 times earnings. I like that. Six is Holly, makes aftermarket auto parts for high-performance vehicles. This is one of the rare SPAC stocks that's above $10, but it's not exactly expensive, selling for 14 times earnings. And it's got steady growth. Holly's a real business. Unbelievable. A SPAC with a real business. Seventh, we've got a pair of gym IPOs that I am shocked are doing well. F45 training and Exponential Fitness. Well, F45 stock has struggled. Exponential Fitness has actually had a nice run. I think they both work once we get over Omicron. Eighth, Sun Country Airlines. Very interesting. It's a smaller, feisty leisure company stock that now trades at 16 times earnings, uh, down substantially from as high, but, you know, travel. Ninth, there's Open Lending. That's a technology company that helps businesses make auto loans. FinTech is in the doghouse here, but as the auto industry recovers from its supply chain woes, maybe it gets a sort of comeback. It's 18 times earnings, probably too expensive. Finally, I like Endeavor. That's the parent company of WME, the talent agency that represents yours truly, along with IMG, the sports media and fashion company, and UFC, the mixed martial art league. What makes me like it? Right now, the streaming services are all at war with each other over talent, and Endeavor controls the talent. Plus, unlike uh, most of these uh, stocks, this is actually up from its IPO price. Hey, by the way, you know another one's up from this IPO price, but it was too expensive as Dutch Bros. Uh, I just couldn't include it, but I think it's got great momentum. So anyway, you're looking at, this is it. Here's the bottom line. This is it. Out of the 600 plus, uh, I don't know, this market hates new listings, and it despises the SPACs, and it's all for good reason, because they're junk. But eventually, this indiscriminate selling will create some buying opportunities. And when that happens, you should be aware that the market has fallen far enough that there's actually a few companies that might, let's just say, be, I don't know, interesting. Corey in New Jersey. Corey. Hey, Jim. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing well, today. Corey. Great. Great to hear that. I'm calling today about SoFi. Yes. S-O-F-I. Curious if this is a good time to buy. It recently broke past the $14 support level. Right. Um, but it did get the bank charter, which should make their costs Yeah, you know, i got to tell you, Corey, I could not believe this stock after rallying. I mean, boy, this market hates anything. But this stock rallied. It should have. And now it's given up all the rally and then some. $9 billion company run by a really good guy, Anthony Noto. I think it works. Let's go to Dan in New Jersey. Dan. Hey, Kramer, uh, just wondering what your thoughts are on tick- ticker symbol HUGS, which will be forming, hopefully, Panera Bread in a few months. Well, you know what? It's a blank check company. The answer is I don't want it. Let's go to Frank in New York. Frank. Jim, how are you? I'm an Eagles fan in upstate New York, so yes. I'm with you on a lot of things. Good to have you there. What's up? We need, the, we need Eagles Nation up there. What's up? <laughs> That's it. Jim, uh, you've had Tom Caulfield, the CEO of Global Foundries, on the show a number of times. And I know we're a few weeks away from their earnings call, but with the shares trading below the IPO price, I just wanted to get your take on the company and shares at this time. Today was a day where everybody said that the semiconductors are going to be in glut. They didn't like what they didn't like what Lam Research said. They didn't like what Teradyne said. They didn't like what Intel said. And they're selling everything. Global Foundries is a very good company. And Tom Caulfield is going to do a very good job. But I cannot put you in the house of pain that everybody else is in at this very moment. All right, the market hates the new listings. Most of them deserve to be hated. The market hates the SPACs. They should really be hated. But eventually, indiscriminate selling will create buying opportunities. I looked at six, We looked at 600, more than 660 companies. And here, these are, some of them are okay. When that, well, you know, when things, let's say when there's a shakeout, you got to keep your eye on things that might represent actual value. Much more mad money ahead, including my exclusive with actual value, Nucor. Could the steelmaker be the kind of stock that we've been talking about that works in this market? I'm checking in with the CEO. Then not all chip makers are created equal. I'm talking about three of the big players, and two of them are being thrown out, just like I just told that gentleman a few minutes ago. And all your calls rapid fire in tonight's edition of the Lightning Round. So stay with Kramer. <laughs> 